everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Catfish. This is season seven, episode 37, CJ and Shayna. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead, do me a favor, stop doing yourself a disjustice. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode of Catfish was good. It was a classic Catfish where you think it's gonna be one thing, flip the script, Womp, 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 womp. Mm. And it's somebody totally different. The least goddamn person that you expected for it to be is who the hell it was. Y'all, this episode was good. And uh, I'm ready for it. Hopefully, y'all are ready for it. So let's get on right into it. Y'all, so we have CJ. He's 25. He's from Syracuse. He's been talking to a girl named Shayna. She is, um, she's from New Jersey. Now, they've been talking for the last eight years, whatever, right? When they first started talking, she was 21 and he was 17. So, of course, he felt like he was the shit shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he got him a little older chick. Little cute thing, real curly hair and all that. Real cute or whatever, right? They ended up meeting because she came up on his Facebook news feed, as people you may know. So, obviously, he seen that they had mutual friends. He slid on up into the DMs. They exchanged phone numbers, and they hit it off from there. Now, fast forward. She's an RN. She has a daughter. And, you know... She's a single mother, whatever, right? Now, CJ started to notice that a lot of shit was off about her. First and foremost, she never really wanted to talk on the phone. She did talk on the phone, not all the time. And then not only that, she never wanted to meet up, never wanted to video chat. She would use excuses like her daughter being sick all the time as one of the excuses why they could never meet up. Now, first and foremost, uh, you know what? I don't want to skip ahead, but a mofo lying on a child like that, I already ain't got no respect for you right there regardless of what the situation is you're gonna bring all lie on your damn self okay but just don't don't bring the babies into it don't lie about the kids so after they had been talking for a little while some time passed about a year passed she disappeared he ain't heard nothing from her then he gets a random message from some chick named destiny lopez she claims to be shana's best friend noticed that the two of them were close she just wanted to let him know that shana passed away so he was like, oh, shit, my boo died. Now, mind you, they ain't never seen each other. They never video chatted. It was just text and talking on the phone. So he's distraught. He's hurt because he was actually in love with this girl based off of communication or conversation alone or whatever, right? So he's depressed. He's sad. Time goes on, right? Two years later, this mofo is scrolling on Facebook. Lo and behold, who pops up and people you may know is Shayna. And he like... What the fuck? I thought you was dead. Where, where, you, where you come from? You, oh, so you, oh, so you been here this whole time. Oh, so you faked death the nigga. Is that what you did? So, girl, he mad. He hopped in a firecracker, right? So, he sends her a message blowing her shit up and was like, Hey, yo, what's the tea, my nigga? You supposed to be dead, but you alive, but you was dead, but now you alive, and then you was dead for two years, and now you alive again. Bitch, what's really hood? What's going on? She gonna reply back, oh, I'm sorry. I was in a really bad relationship and I just didn't know how to get out of it. So I apologize. I'd be like, bitch, apologize? Uh-uh, uh no, 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 no. So when he finally does start talking to her again, he's in a relationship, right? Now, his relationship that he's currently in, he ends up breaking up with the girl. One, because the girl finds out that he's texting this other girl. She done scrolled through, found text messages and all of this shit, naked pictures and everything that they send into each other. Now, how the hell for find coochie pics? Well, I mean, it's pretty simple. That's Pornhub and all of that. But how she find a specific picture to look or match the skin tone of the girl who she been playing to be this whole time, y'all, it was crazy or whatever, right? So he ended up breaking up with his real-life girlfriend who it real life that in the flesh who he been seeing this whole time for some virtual reality chick that he ain't never even seen who was dead for two years but just done popped that up. I'm like, nigga, What? He says Shayna asked would even Facebook stalk other girls that he's talked to before. So the heifer wouldn't call them, but she would be all up in their DMs, all on their Facebook page and shit, going wild, wilding out. But he loved her. He loved her and he would allow that to happen. You would allow that to happen from a chick you ain't never seen before in your life but through some pictures. But like he said, they've been talking for eight years, minus out really about two and a half years when she died. 
And so he's in love with the girl. So Neve is like, look here, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I need to help homeboy back up. I wanted to tell you who Neve's co-host is. Neve's co-host is old fine-ass Justin Combs, right? And I can call him fine-ass because he's over 21. That's Puff Daddy's son or whatever, right? Now, homeboy used to play for UCLA. He's a VP to um, Combs Enterprise, and he is currently going to Harvard working on his MBA. I just had to get a black little brother shout-out right there because it's like, damn, you cute, and you out here, like, getting your backs and your coins and all that. Shout out to Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy be making some brilliant-ass kids. He crazy as hell, but he makes some brilliant-ass kids. And you know what? My ADHD kicking in mode. Chill out. Focus. We gonna move on from that. So, Neve and Justin go off to do their investigation or whatever, right? And, of course, they always start off with an image search. They look for her on the image search, can't find nothing about her or whatever, right? But they do see that she started a GoFundMe page for her daughter, saying that her daughter has cancer in her leg. Now, they look at the GoFundMe page. Nobody has delivered her any money to that, that, that shit yet, thank God. Hopefully, they done shut that shit down. I'm over the head. But, anyways, they reach out to a couple of people who they seen she had interactions with on Facebook or whatever, right? One dude named Bubba said that um, she sent him a random friend request. They started talking, but he quickly dead at that when she noticed that she was playing games. She never wanted to video chat, never wanted to meet up, yada, yada, yada. They meet up, uh, they um, talk with this other guy. He says the same thing. He actually said that they dated for about five months, that she would play all these games with, they ad, with his ass, never wanted to meet up, that she actually said she went to his job, described everything that, she, that he had on at his job, but never came out and said who she was. Dude said that she even called out his name and everything. He was looking around, but couldn't find nobody. So he was like, you know, bitch, you crazy. You stalking me at my job and all that. So he ended that with her. Then they end up talking to this other guy named Pape. Pape said the same thing that CJ said. He was in a relationship with her for eight years just through them communicating through text messages and through goddamn um, uh, talking on the phone and texting. I'm sorry, y'all. That's not dating to me. If I can't see you face to face, we touch and we all up in. I, no, that's not, that's not dating because we've been texting and we talking on the phone. Unless y'all have committed from the get-go, y'all in a long-distance relationship and y'all are still video chatting and you can see each other, the actual see you, a real-ass person. To me, that ain't goddamn dating. But anyway, Paige said he know good and damn well that she a catfish because she gave him an address where she can, or he could come and meet her, right? He said he drove 40 miles to where she was, got there, called her. She ain't answering the phone, but then she texts him talking about she sees him described on everything he had on, described the car and everything. He said the bitch is a total catfish, her and her homegirl, Destiny. Now, they didn't even ask him about Destiny, Destiny at first. He came out with the info about Destiny. Says Destiny even tried to hit him up and holler at him. So now they know for a fact that the chick is catfishing because they done already got three more confirmations that this half of this just out here catfishing everybody seeing what she can do whatever right so they get back to the house with cj to tell cj everything that they found out or whatever right basically they know that she's not really is who she says she is and destiny her homegirl's probably a catfish or whatever too now he he took it like a g he looked like he wanted to go in the room get in the shower let the water just run over him he crawl up in a burrow and then just suck on his little old thumb he wanted to cry he was crying on the inside but he held that shit together you know what i'm saying he kept a g or whatever with her ass or whatever right so Neve ends up calling her, leaving her a message. Hey, this is Neve from Catfish. We're here with CJ. He wants to go ahead and meet up with you. Let us know when's a good time when we can meet up with you. Child, baby, it's not even 10 minutes later. Shana sends a message to CJ and was like, I can't believe you're doing this to me. I'm blocking you. So he's like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so bitch, you can reply back like that. Like you finna block me, but now all of a sudden nigga trying to get at you. Oh, you know, what's the word? I see what it is, y'all. Pause. I want to apologize because my dryer is going on in the background right now. I can't help it. I got to have clean shit around this bitch. Excuse me. So Neve tells CJ not to answer her back on that text message, right? To just let the bitch sit and marinate on or whatever, right? So it's the next day. He gets over there. Neve and Justin get back over there to CJ's house or whatever, right? And so as soon as they get there, CJ's like, Shannon just sent me a text message and was like, oh my God, I just met, I just met Neve. I can't believe you're doing this to me sends CJ a picture. This heifer was sitting in the lobby in the cut, 
that took a picture of Neve and Justin walking through the hotel lobby and sends it to CJ. What kind of stalker ass shit is that? Like, how did you even find out what hotel room Justin and me were in in the first damn place? Like, did you Google catfish location? Like, how did you even find that out? Neve looks at the picture. He's like, I saw her. I was walking through the lobby and I noticed some creepy ass chick in the corner on her phone. And I could tell she was taking pictures, but Neve was like, I didn't go up to her because I just thought she was a fan. So they go back and they play the tape, trying to look and see if they can see who it was. Lo and behold, they could not find, they didn't see it because the angle that the cameraman was shooting them coming out of the hotel, it was a wall up. And so they didn't go past that wall. But you can see Neve clear, clearly looking over at the girl who's the goddamn catfish the whole time. Y'all, I thought that shit was crazy as hell. Like, bitch, you stalking the stalker who trying to stalk you. Stalking ass. Y'all, so CJ finally sent Shane a text message and was like, look, I really want to meet you. I'm sorry for all of this, but I, I really, you know, I really want to meet you, get to know you, whatever, right? So Shayna finally calls back and agrees to meet up with them. She gives them the address to this park to where they can meet up at, right? So they get to the park and it's creepy as hell. They drive in, they get a text message from Shayna. She's like, hey, I see y'all. Come down here to the fork in a road and make a left like on some old creepy stalker ass shit right so they drive down there they get out the car they see a chick sitting in the cut she comes slowly and like from a distance bitch she wasn't like a hundred feet away she was like a hundred miles away this bitch was far it was like the green mile the way she was walking she walked all the way down the hill came up child When I tell you, the one, she was everything opposite, okay? Now, I'm not gonna talk about her, none of that. Let, let me just say this. The description of who she claimed to be was some mixed breed chick with this curly hair, itty bitty small frame, little cutesy wootsy something. Everything I just said, she was the exact opposite of that. The, the size, the color, the hair, the everything, baby. She was a true life catfish. Her name is Rebecca. Now, Rebecca admits that she started the Facebook page originally to spy on her ex. She stole pictures from this girl that was friends with her son on Facebook. When she started the page, she was 30. Damn, CJ was 17. So you sat up here and played with this little boy. Baby, if it was me and I was looking back on that, I'd go find her ass. Even though my baby is 25 or whoever, however old he is now. Bitch, you was 30. He was 17. So you were sitting up there. First of all, you were stealing pictures from your son's friends. So you were stealing pictures from another baby to catfish another baby which I don't get that she says she had feelings for him she started falling for him I'm like girl girl that's borderline pedophile I'm sorry but it is you 30 he's 17 I'm sorry it's nasty it's it's nasty it's nasty as hell. She lied about the damn child with cancer, said that she really does have a daughter, and she lied and said it was her daughter that had cancer of the leg. Bitch, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Not only did your 30-some-year-old ass catfish 17-year-old, you stole pictures, was sending bucket naked pictures of yourself to this man and all of this, but you wasn't even pictures of you. It was pictures of somebody else. Then you lied about your daughter having cancer. Then she couldn't even admit that she sabotaged the other relationships that CJ had been in. She tried to say, no, I don't recall that. I don't remember any of that, y'all. CJ was so hurt. I know the nigga cried in the car after this. Because first of all, I had no idea that you wasn't you. But now I know that you ain't you. I know he went home. Baby, he had a whole scene out of Ace Ventura when he was in that shower, when he found out that he had an iron horn was Finkel and Finkel was iron horn. And baby, he was in that shower. That's exactly what CJ ass was doing. He was in that shower and he was crying because his girl had catfished his whole damn life. His, from 17 to 25, this helped a lot about who she was the whole damn time, the whole time. So of course CJ mad, he pissed off. He like, uh-uh, maybe I can be a friend with you. We got to pray on that. We'll see where that go. We'll give it to God. I can't make no promises. So, 
they do the little follow up, whatever, with him, like three, four months or whatever follow up. He says that him and Shayna talk, well, not even Shayna, Rebecca, they talk for about a week or so afterwards, and eventually he cut it off with her ass because he was like, it's too much damage. Not only that, she's older than me. Like, we ain't got shit in common. Your damn show can't be no stepdaddy. Like, no, he did all of that. They tried to get in contact with Rebecca to do a follow-up with her. Despite numerous attempts, she didn't call them back or nothing. Hell no, nah, because her ass is embarrassed. Somebody mama out there looking for her ass right now because you done stole all my baby pictures, and now I'm finna beat the brakes off your ass. That's just me. That's just the kind of mama I am. But, y'all, that was the end of the episode right there, y'all. This catfish was good. Was it watchworthy? I absolutely think it was. It was a good-ass episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this review. If y'all seen this episode, y'all let me know what y'all thought about it because I thought this one was good. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.